Oh, good morning everyone. It is not quite seven o'clock and I've been up for about 10 minutes. Haven't had my coffee yet. We are in Pattaya in Ocean Marina and today we are heading off. We're heading down to an island called Koh Samet and then I think tomorrow we're gonna continue on our journey to Koh Chang. Beautiful morning for it, absolutely stunning. I've just checked the weather and uh, yeah, I think it's gonna be a day of two halves. I think first half of the day is gonna be perfect, hopefully. Wind on the beam should be nice. And then I think we're gonna get some wind on the nose later on and maybe have to just do with that. Whew. I'm Teresa, this is Nick, and this is Ruby Rose 2, our floating home. Join us as we settle into life on board our brand new catamaran, documenting our adventures and never shying away from the reality of boat life. Subscribe to our channel and leave a comment because we'd love to hear from you and a big thanks to our community of patrons. As you may recall from last week's episode, we had just spent a few months away from Ruby Rose 2 while she had her warranty work and some repairs and also some retrofitting of new items done. So we we're coming back to her having spent some time away and also a lot of these items hadn't been checked since we had left so for example the mainsail had been sent away to china to be repaired and now coming back we had to double check that everything was ready for us to go sailing what's going on up there not seized and half undone right can you explain why it's important that this is done uh because essentially the, if it works itself loose and we lose this shackle pin well you, the mainsail comes down and the bloody Halyard stays at the top of the mast. Yeah, that would be pretty bad, wouldn't it? It would be very bad. I checked all of the other shackles on the boom yesterday. Turn it in twice. There we go. I would be waiting for you if you had to leave. I would wait a lifetime if you were at sea. That bow's off. We're off. Right next to the fuel pontoon. So we've got loads of space. So that's nice. And absolutely no wind. Perfect morning just to get off the dock without any dramas. I'm gonna link up here to the last time we tried to get off our dock, which was our very first sail and it was an absolute schmozzle. So yeah, if you want to see a less smooth leaving situation, then um, give it a watch. That was uh, full on. Anyway, that went better and off we go. And that is the Seawind 1370, hull number four, Eora, waiting for Ollie and Dave to pick her up. I would give it all away to do it all again. <laughs> That's a little bit smoother than last time. <laughs> One thing about a cat is we haven't got a, you know, normally we have to get up and kind of stow everything and now we just leave it all out, which is kind of like, it's nice. Teresa's getting the fenders in, the lines are stowed. So in a boat that we haven't used for a while, and the mainsail has been repaired. There's a few things I want to do this morning. We're just in the bay outside the marina. The first thing I need to do is get the mainsail up and check it. I also, we need to be very, very careful. We don't know the position of the leaf reefing lines, whether or not Phil has actually pulled them taut or whether they're all in the sail bag. So we do need to make sure that that's all done very, very carefully. The other thing I want to do this morning, I talked to Magnus of Gori at the Annapolis Boat Show and he gave us a really nice chat about overdrive. Now, seeing as we have approximately ooh, two knots of wind, I wanna try the overdrive function of these gory props because we need to save diesel. And so what I think we're gonna do is run the starboard engine under overdrive if we can. For those of you who don't know about uh, gory props, they have uh, different positions, different pitches according to how you engage them. And one thing you can do is change the pitch to uh, what is called the overdrive mode and that overdrive mode um, gives you greater fuel economy. But what you have to do is you have to have the boat going backwards and then going from backwards straight into forwards. And apparently that's how it works. 
and you can hear a difference in pitch. So I do want to get that done today. I really want to see uh, how that fuel efficiency works because for longer pastures, that's going to be super, super, super important for us. Are you ready? I'm ready. Yeah, should be okay. There's nothing stopping it here. Yep. We're going to run starboard engine only. So now we have two knots of boat speed. Now I now need to go get the boat into reverse by about one knot. So it's actually traveling backwards go from reverse. We've got about a knot going back. No, we're not getting any, I don't think we're going back at all yet. I think we should still slowing down. We're going backwards now. Yeah. And according to Magnus, we then just do this. Do you think that works? It didn't work, it didn't work. I'm still going to keep the engine revs at about 1800. Set a course where we need to go to. So we're just heading down towards that fishing boat, the peninsula. That's that it done. It sound a bit louder. Is it meant to sound louder? Yes. Maybe it will become clear to us throughout the morning whether we're in, uh, what's it called? Overdrive? I'm on watch for another hour or so. And we are just going through this channel between the mainland and one of the big islands around here and we definitely have quite the counter current we are only doing four and a half knots um, there's no wind at all I think there's only yeah three knots of wind and we're running the engines at 1900 revs and I think that the overdrive is on I am trying to keep the boat out of the kind of deepest part of the channel because that's where the current will be running the strongest and as I said I'm pretty sure we've got foul tide or current I don't know what it is at the moment it does show pretty quickly and I'm not I don't totally trust the charts either so I'm just trying to keep an eye on the depth at the moment we've got 11 meters and uh, that's what I'll be trying to maintain all through this channel so I'm looking forward to getting out around the corner and away we go I mean you can see how disturbed the water is at least I hope you can see and that's not wind, uh, that's, that's all current. So yeah, probably running quite strongly over on, towards starboard. There's some fishing boats in there, so I'm assuming that's why they're hanging out. Look at these beautiful stars, I wanna drive a faster car. They want troubles to rest. I feel like every time we go sailing recently, I'm talking about how nice it is. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, what can I say? It's really, really beautiful. Sailing around Thailand was definitely a good choice. We are out of the channel, so we made it through. I reckon we had about a two knot current against us. So, you know, it could have been worse, I suppose. And we are now kind of threading our way through the islands just south of Pattaya. And we are still motor sailing. We've only got, I think, about five knots of wind. And I don't know, the forecast said the wind was gonna be 10 to 15 knots this morning. And we definitely haven't had that. So that kind of shakes my confidence in the entire forecast. As you can see, we've got the jib out and the main up. We are doing about six and a half, seven knots with the engines running. We've got about 50 miles to do today in total. And we did leave a little bit late this morning. We did have a little sleep in, so we didn't actually get out until about 7.30, 8 o'clock. Whoops. So we do want to get in before dark. It's just so nice to sail along the coast and have things to look at as you're kind of going along. Beautiful sunny day. Glorious, absolutely glorious. So very happy today. And we're happy to be on the move again. It's just, it's funny how, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I get very settled in one place and then, you know, you kind of get into this little routine and you don't want to leave. And the marina at Pattaya is just so nice and it's so comfortable, it's convenient and it's well protected and we've, you know, got shore power and it's just so easy. And so it can be hard to get the motivation kind of going to, to head off. And then as soon as you are out of the marina and on your way, it just feels so good. 
Uh, so yeah, I love going to new places. I love being on the move. Uh, this is my happy place. So we'll see what the rest of the day brings. As we were sailing along and enjoying the beautiful scenery, we did have a little bit of excitement and that is because Nick decided to put up a little clothesline so that we could dry our clothes in the cockpit. But he decided to loop it around where the boat hook is attached to the roof of the target arch. So thank you by filming you that you're struggling with this. Well, it was fine till you got involved with your yeah. camera. And what we didn't know at the time was that this would actually dislodge the boat hook. We only have one boat hook and anyone who sails knows that the boat hook is crucially, crucially important. And anyway, next thing we know, we heard a little plop and there's our boat hook behind the boat. And I tell you what, it was a bad feeling. So we decided to go and get it. We decided, hey, it's as good a time as any to practice a man overboard drill. So let's turn the boat around and chase after that boat hook. And so we quickly Build in the jib and it soon became clear that of course without a boat hook we couldn't really get the boat hook because we couldn't grab it so the decision was quickly made for one of us to jump in the water grab it and uh, bring it back to the boat and that person ended up being me Swim back up. Yeah, yeah, I'll get the ladder out. Go. You did the washer underwear. Yeah, that's very refreshing actually. That was nice. <sighs> okay, I'm glad we got that boat hook back because uh, we'll need that. Whew. I don't know, we're going in that direction somewhere. I tell you what, that was really nice. So from now on, the question line goes underneath the boat hook. And he says, oh, sorry. Is it, someone else. As if someone needs to learn this lesson. Yeah, not bad. I've just had a nice refreshing dip. A dip? Yeah, just a little dip. Yeah, I rescued the boat hook. I'm pleased that we've got that boat hook back because that would have been a massive pain. So we're doing six knots of boat speed and nine knots of apparent wind speed with an apparent wind angle of 73 with the screech route and it's just a beautiful sail i've got to say the true wind direction is 179 degrees so it's coming from the tower and uh the forecast said northeasterlies so i'm very confused but anyway i'm not complaining anyway happy days all right you're good to drop Stop, stop, stop. We're not quite centre. I think we need to go a little bit to starboard. The sail's falling over the sail bag. Okay, stop and now drop it. Yep, keep going, keep going. All right, sails are packed away. Had a few issues getting the main sail down, but um, yeah, not sure if that was user error or whether there just needs to be a little bit of um, attention given to the tracks or maybe the halyard. Seems to be a bit of tension on the halyard, so maybe it's not running freely. I'm not sure. We'll have to, or oh, Nick, <laughs> we'll have to just double check all that. Anyway, we got it down in the end and we're closing in on tonight's uh, anchorage. Excuse me while I dodge another fishing pot. Okay, we're anchored. I didn't film any of that because the Thai police uh, literally came up to us just as I was about to grab the camera and start filming and so it's obviously not a good look to um, to do that and as soon as they left um, we were in exactly the right place to anchor so we're like okay let's just drop the anchor anyway so the Thai police arrived because they said we're in the national park and we needed to pay some money so that's okay unfortunately they told us that we're not allowed to go ashore so that's a shame. Never mind. It looks beautiful. I think this is a result that's so high end. It looks really 
quite swanky um, ashore. So that's okay, we are here, we are anchored in about five meters. We think our anchor is perfectly dug in, so fingers crossed that um, that stays like that all night. And alarms, we will have multiple alarms, especially after that other time that we'll never talk about again. And here's the, the, here's the type of lease. They just told us we have to pick up a mooring buoy and we're just congratulating ourselves on anchoring perfectly. Good thing we've got our boat hook. Which buoy do you want to go for? I'll see if we can put the biggest drop on it. Hopefully the orange one first. Yeah. Try that one actually, it's got a slightly better protection. The one closest? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. We're here. We're sorted in. We picked up a mooring buoy. I'll show you. Um, we did reverse on it. I'm hoping that, you know, it's okay. We'll set anchor alarms tonight and uh, fingers crossed it's all good. I mean, the buoy itself looks nice and new. It doesn't look kind of faded and knackered, but um, yeah, never can tell. Anyway, we were told to pick one up, so I'm hoping that they're rated for our weight. Normally, we kind of set up a bridle system if we're on a mooring buoy, where we have two kind of lines going from each bow um, through a hook. Um, or a pendant, pennant, or a pennant um, on the buoy, but you can't do that with this one because uh, there's nothing there. Um, it's just the strop, so we can't do anything about that. And we could put the strop in the water and then attach the mooring lines to the strop itself, but then we'd be a little bit too close, I think, to this um, pontoon because we'll swing in the night and I don't want to be hitting that in the middle of the night. At the moment, our swing circle is very, very small, so that's good. Anyway, the Thai police were very, very polite, very lovely. And we've got this beautiful view for the evening. Very nice. Unfortunately, Nick cut his hand as he was picking up the mooring boy. How's your hand, babe? Sorry? It's all right. It's all right. Okay, well done. Success. Congratulations on a success, success. Success, success, successful sale. <laughs> a successful sale. I guess we took a break, break from this for Napoli for another bits and bobs. Oh, We're getting the hang of it. Phil has done a good job. The netting's changed on the boom so that we have. Now, we don't have as much chafe, prob problems with chafe. He's actually, at my request, put uh, an anti-chafe patch on the aft side of the radar dome. So I'm not so worried about chafe. I kind of think we do have to do a little bit of work. There is one of the outstanding issues is that the lines um, that run under deck are crossed over because Phil changed. Basically, the main halyard was running wrong to the winch. So he moved it from one of the line handlers to the, the inboard, inboard most one, but it needs to be done all the way around to the mast. So there are lines crossing over and basically that, plus there was some resistance in the mast slide track. The main is just not dropping properly. It, and so we need to get the main dropped better. And that is something that we will go back to when we go back to Pattaya. Well, but look, the main drop is just not working for us. Phil did say, look, you'll come back with another list and we will. But we have a lot of confidence in the boat, like picking up a boring boy for us is like meh now. We know how to do it. Yeah. Anchoring is like, yeah, we know what the limitations are. Successful day. Yeah, time yeah. for a beer. Time for a beer. Yes. For sure, let's do it. that's it from us for today i hope you enjoyed this episode if you did then give us a thumbs up leave us a comment down below and we'll see you next week with another episode we are sailing to Ko Chang. i cannot wait i hope you guys join us we'll see you then take care bye